Hey, everybody, we are back with another episode of Can't Stop Snapping, the official podcast of MarvelSnapZone.com. Before we jump into today's episode, I just want to take a moment to apologize for the audio issues that you're going to hear in the upcoming episode. Uh, There was just some misconfiguration, some things I didn't realize uh, at the time of recording. Uh, My guest host's audio quality is better than my own. Uh, I just sound uh, echoey and kind of fuzzy, so I really apologize for that. I really strive to have a good audio quality here for you to all listen to, and I've taken strides to improve that in the past, so I do apologize for this mistake. I wish I could go back and re-record the conversation, uh, but at the time of editing and getting ready for uh, this episode ready for release, that's just not possible. So I really hope you'll stick with us. You'll, uh, you'll forgive us this time around for the unideal audio quality. Uh, I think we have a great conversation for you today about uh, how Marvel Snap is different than other card games and some of the things you need to understand as a player. Uh, I really hope you can learn and enjoy the episode, uh, even though there are some issues. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. Hey, everybody, we are back with another episode of Can't Stop Snapping, the official podcast of MarvelSnapZone.com. Uh, today we have a conversation that was actually generated by uh, a suggestion that Den, our guest from last week, had to me. We were chatting and, you know, he brought up some interesting points of just maybe some misconceptions or some kind of shift of thought that's happening when players are coming to Marvel Snap from other games, other card games. And so uh, we decided to have Den back on this week to uh, have this interesting conversation and hopefully help out a few of you that are listening to this that maybe are coming from other uh, card gaming backgrounds, and this can kind of help you to change your mindset and kind of understand uh, how Marvel Snap differs um, in playing and winning in, you know, what you want to accomplish in the game. So, Den, thank you for joining us once again. Well, uh, thanks for having me and actually uh, bringing uh, one of my ideas to light. Yeah, no, this was a great suggestion, and I'm glad we were able to make it happen so quickly after you suggested it. So, uh, let's dive right in. So, you know, you had messaged me and essentially said that, uh, you know, take a, taking a look at the community, uh, a lot of the people are coming from other card games, and this is leading to some misconceptions about Marvel Snap. Uh, things like win rate, cube average, or, you know, trying to curve it instead of playing a different way, etc. Just kind of bringing these play styles, these methodologies from other card games, and trying to attach it to Marvel Snap. Uh, so let's just start out. Let's just kind of elaborate on your idea. What what made you think of this? What have you been seeing? Uh, well, first, I guess it's because it's a lot of people that I've known from uh, previous card games that I've been playing. Like I've been playing seriously on Hearthstone and uh, Legends of Runeterra. So suddenly I've seen a lot of people that I knew back then talk about Marvel Snap and things like this. And uh, very experienced players have the tendency to be very comfortable when the environment is similar. And so what I was seeing is these players, which I knew were really good at uh, card games, be incredibly comfortable on Marvel Snap, like they would get infinite quite fast and things like this. Yet they weren't really talking like Marvel Snap explicitly. They were more talking about card games and trying to make it fit to Marvel Snap, and considering the game doesn't rely on the exact same principles, like the length of the game, um, the way to climb the ladder, and things like this are different, uh, I noticed there were like some uh, minor uh, minor differences, and uh, that's basically what gave me the idea. Cool. Well, let's, let's dive into some of those differences, and, and maybe let's start with this idea of playing on curve. Uh, kind of talk about how people coming from other games kind of understand curve and what that means and how that is different in Marvel Snap. I think the the big point to understand that difference is that the end of a game in Marvel Snap and in other games like Yu-Gi-Oh, like Hearthstone, like Magic, like Legends of Runeterra are different. In most card games, each player has a set amount of health and the game ends when one of the two players reaches zero which means we don't really know how many turns we're going to play. We just have this counter that as it goes lower, we know we're approaching the end of the game. In Marvel Snap, there's no health points. 
you know the game ends after six, or if someone plays magic or limbo reveals on itself after seven. So it's different in the sense that in other games you want to play on curve because your mana is actually like important to to advance towards that goal of lowering your opponent's health, and also because you don't know how long the game will last, you're afraid whatever you're not using now is lost forever. In Marvel Snap, because it's much easier to guess how long the game will last, it's really easy to guess how much mana total you're going to have at your disposal. And with that information, you can kind of math out exactly the cards that you want to play and when you want to play them, and that leads to a completely different way of actually like building a game plan. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I, I will say I'm very guilty of this. I mean, I have fallen into this trap time and time again where... You know, I've played other card games and I come to Marvel Snap and I make suboptimal plays, right? Because, uh, you know, I'm on turn three and it probably makes more sense to play a card in my hand that costs two energy in Marvel Snap. But I'm like, but I also have this card that's three energy, right? And so I'm like, I need to fill the curve. I need to use all my energy because I don't want to waste any, right? And then, well, then what happens? My next turn. Uh, maybe I draw a four cost card, right? And then it's turn four, and then I feel like I need to play that. But really, I should have played that two cost card, and now I've skipped it for two turns, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of the two cost cards are, are probably worth playing earlier than later in, in a lot of circumstances. And so, so it's really that classic scenario where your game or your brain is playing games on you, right? Where you think you're losing something by not, uh, kind of using every bit of energy every single turn in Marvel Snap. And so that can lead you to really make mistakes, right? That's, that's kind of what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. That That's exactly the point. It's because, and it's kind of weird because this happens to experienced card game players and it doesn't really happen to someone who would be starting his card game experience with Marvel Snap. Uh, so it kind of works backward. You would imagine someone that has been playing card games his whole life uh, would actually be much better at Marvel Snap. And it's actually the case. But if you look at the intricacies, uh, sometimes you just realize they're good at card games, but we're making like basic mistakes when it comes to Marvel Snap. And I think it also comes from the lack of understanding that the board is a resource, which it really isn't in other card games. Like sure, like Hearthstone, Runeterra, they have a limitation to how many units you can have on the board at once. But at the same time, I mean, if your opponent never removes your units, you're probably going to win anyway because you're going to deal so much damage. In Marvel Snap, we only have 12 spots and they can go by like really, really fast, especially if we get some locations or stuff like this that are impacting it as well. Yeah, that, that's an interesting thought. Uh, and I think that, again, is kind of this, this concept, kind of pulling it all together, several of the things you've said, right? You're not trying to get your opponent's health to zero, right? So that's out the door. Um, and so you really are playing to the locations and the locations change every game, right? So every game instantly kind of how you need to play and where you need to play changes. And more often than not, it's, it's not going to be a perfect on turn one, I use all the energy, turn two, I use all the energy, turn three, I use all the energy, et cetera, all the way to the end of the game, right? There's going to be turns where it's okay to miss because that's what the, the board requires, right? Based on what the locations are. Yeah, and that's also how you're kind of unpredictable. Like the thing in another card game, imagine like I play a one mana card on one, a one mana, a two mana card on two, on three. Even if my opponent kind of knows what's coming, as long as I can do it, it's not a problem. Like you answer my five, I play a six. You answer my six, I play a seven. And I can do that almost forever as long as I have cards and you do too. In Marvel Snap, there's a hard stop at some point, which means if I'm predictable, my opponent knows exactly at which point in the game they have to get ahead and they win the game. Yeah. So if I just go one, two, three, four, five, six, my opponent has almost like complete information on what they have to beat and also when they have to beat it. So you're just playing with like kind of your card revealed and that's the one thing you don't want to do in Marvel Snap. Yeah. Yeah, definitely interesting. Well, let's shift our gears a little bit to uh, to talk more about win rates. Um, that's something we've talked about on the podcast, but I think we'll have a little bit more of a detailed conversation here. Um, so obviously, like you win and lose in Marvel Snap, 
right? It's not like we have changed that concept. Yes, yeah, it's card game. You win. You play to win. Uh, but that being said, win rate is not determining how you rank up on the ladder. So you kind of break it, break it down for us. How how is this different than other card games? Well, basically, the the difference, and this is where Marvel Snap has been largely compared to poker, is that you don't really know how much you're going to gain or lose when you exit a game. In most other games, you know exactly what you're coming in in the game. You have the exact same uh, like amount of win or loss, except games which introduce the win streak bonus or things like this. But otherwise, like if I take, I don't know, Runeterra or Hearthstone, Hearthstone, you gain a star, you lose a star. Runeterra, you gain X amount of LP or you lose X amount of LP. There's no surprise to this in marvel snap you can gain one two four or eight cubes and lose the same amount depending on the player's choice depending on how the game is going and a lot of things and looking at win rate while it's helpful i mean everyone wants to have a nice win rate and you can actually capitalize on it if you have a super good win rate but you have one one cube wins and you have eight cube losses you need to have something like a 90% win rate to actually make up for it, which doesn't exist. I mean, even, I guess, Kenya Best, which is arguably the best player in the game right now, and he's reached, like, rank 500. I don't even think this guy has 90%. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a very different uh, different, different style of thinking and playing. I mean, you, you made the comparison to poker, and that's not something only you or me have done. Other people have made that same comparison, right? I think it's when, 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 yeah, when you're playing a game of poker, right, like, more, if you look at every hand dealt during the whole game, uh, the majority of the time you're going to fold, right? Um, or you're not going to... You're, you're, you're going to play, if you play half your hands in poker, that actually got, like, I think it's on the higher hand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you really are kind of shifting this, looking for the optimal plays, the optimal draws, the optimal times to raise the stakes. Uh, which is very different than every card game. And I mean, it, it can be hard. It can be hard to adjust to that. One, it's different. But two, um, it's just a new way of thinking, kind of the stakes raising. If people don't play games where stakes are raised, right, like poker or something else, or they haven't played it, uh, that can be kind of a tricky concept to catch on to, right? Um, and from poker, there's also not a difference. Uh, in poker, there's a concept that's called like playing the man, which means as the game progresses and you're still playing against the same person, you start to learn their tendency and things like this. So you might be get, getting better at bluffing them or like um, catching their cues or stuff like this. In Marvel Snap, because you basically change opponent all the time, this is something that you can't really do. So it's much more about knowing what you are playing and your strategy rather than trying to find like outside sources of information. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I, I want to read a quote here from Jeff Hoagland that he posted on Twitter. As you and me were kind of preparing for this episode, I saw it. Uh, he says, focusing on your win rate in card games is basically never the correct, uh, the correct, is never correct when trying to get better, but it is extra wrong to do in Marvel Snap. Retreating when stakes are raised, snap, isn't the same as a loss. Leveraging good snaps and retreats in the best way is the best way to climb. Um, and I think that's another way of saying what we're trying to say is that, uh, you know, I think the classic mistake that I see, and again, uh, totally guilty here, I make it all the time too. When I'm playing people, they, uh, they play and they have an optimal, uh, card played on turn four or turn five, right? So it's not quite the end of the game and they'll play something. Or maybe it's Killmonger and it clears part of my board. Maybe it's Shang-Chi. Maybe it's uh, Professor X and they've locked down a lane, et cetera, right? Something where it kind of, it's kind of a moment defining part of the match, right? Where, okay, now they have the upper hand and the game's not over. And then they don't snap until after that happens, right? Now, I'm not saying that's always, I'm not saying you always do, you always snap or don't snap depending on the situation. But a lot of the times they don't snap until after uh, some big thing has resolved, and then I'm just going to retreat because all I'm going to lose is one cube. Now, in a lot of those cases, if they had snapped before that turn resolved and that event had happened on turn four or five, which gave them the upper hand, I would have continued the turn because it looks like things are even, right? Um, yeah, th th this is something that I think there's already an article in it like about snapping specifically, but 
the the way I think one should see the snap is you're kind of offering a deal to your opponent. Like you just ask them, do you want to play for more? And if they don't want to take the deal, they just retreat. But the goal when you snap is that you think you're going to win this game. I don't think you ever snap when you think you're going to lose it unless you're trying to bluff and force a retreat. But we're just going to ignore that part for now. So imagine you think you're going to win. So you snap. If you just offer a super bad deal to your opponent, they're never going to take it. So the way to snap is actually you need to offer a deal that you're confident you're going to win, but it's not obvious enough that your opponent is just going to be like, why would I take the deal? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the uh, yeah. But I, I can't name, you know, the number of hundreds of matches I've played, right, where somebody snaps on turn six and neither of us have snapped to that point. Of course, I'm going to retreat, right? If, if it's very clear that they're winning, I have no way of winning and they're snapping at that point. Uh, I mean, they're only going to get one cube, right? Now... Yeah, you should only slap on six in a contested game. Yes. And that being said, there are times where uh, when somebody doesn't snap, uh, you know, and I still may retreat because it's obvious I'm going to lose, but there is that mental game you play with people. If you if you don't snap and the stakes are going to only be raised to two at the end, then, you know, some people are more... I think people are more likely to stay in until the end of the game and let the game resolve and lose the two cubes because, it, you know, losing two is better than losing four, right? But you can use that to your... You can use that to your advantage. True, and this is like I think this should have a name, like, but that's actually like the correct snap. If we just translate snap to raising stakes, actually, like not snapping on turn six, so the game goes to two instead of one, is the correct snap because you're actually raising the snake the stakes of the game by not snapping. Yeah, yeah. So definitely an intricate. I mean, it's an intricate system, and it's difficult to master. I am still struggling. I go through phases. Um, you know, uh, this has been said multiple times on this podcast by many guests, right? You're playing four cubes, right? And you, you said this, right? We're not, we're not looking at our win loss ratio as much as we are in other games, right? You're playing, you should you're, still look at it like a little yes. bit. It's just, it shouldn't be the important factor while it is in other games. Like in Hearthstone, if you have 65% win rate, just keep going. Good things are going to happen to you. In Marvel Snap, it's more of an information rather than uh, like something uh, definite. I, I I lost the the word here. I'm sorry, but no, yeah, I I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, um, but don't be afraid to retreat, right? I think that is one of the another thing that's kind of different from other card games, and people maybe are struggling with as they adjust to Marvel Snap from other card games is that. Um, you know, you you really want that win, right? And, and in other card games, when the game's going longer, I, I think you have, obviously, potentially more opportunities, right? If the game goes 10, 15, 20 turns, however long it goes, depending on what card game you're playing, uh, you have kind of more chances to uh, flip who's going to win or lose, right? Um, yep. So with Marvel Snap and with, with the uh, raising the stakes, with it being a, a really short game, you really have to think about it as, you know, okay, uh, I am retreating from this match. Uh, it's not going my way. They've snapped, and I'm not going to win this one. Okay, I'll just take the one loss, and I'll just dive into the next one, right? Yeah, and it's not that uncommon. Like, uh, I've, I've co-streamed and I've helped other players that have started the game recently, and sometimes we're losing, like, four to five games in a row, and they're like, but we're doing terrible. I'm like, no, we lost four cubes. Like, this, We can get that back in one game. It just yep. happens. You have this unfortunate streaks, and you have these fortunate streaks. And I think the best players are going to make the unfortunate streaks be a lot of one cube losses and the fortunate ones, a lot of four cubes wins. And this is, I think, where you separate from the pack. Hey all, I wanted to take a quick moment to talk to you about MarvelSnapZone.com. Marvel Snap Zone is a one-stop shop for everything Marvel Snap on the internet. They have new articles nearly every day that cover deck building, strategy, card breakdowns, etc. They have a great collection tracker tool and a deck list builder that works off of that collection tracker so that you can know what decks you can build with your current card collection. 
They have guides and deck lists for all level players and all collection level players. Make sure to go to marvelsnapzone.com and check it out now. Uh, you know, I was playing a, a, a deck last night, uh, kind of an arrow disrupts your opponent deck. For those who don't know, arrow is a five cost, eight mana card that moves all the cards that your opponent played that turn to the location of arrow. It pairs well with kingpin and a couple other things. So I was, I was trying this out kind of for the first time last night, uh, by recommendation from a few, uh, friends and a few former, uh, guest hosts. And it was just not going well for me. Let's say that I dropped several levels, uh, you know, uh, but I tried to keep it to losing one to two cubes per game, right? Um, and so even though it didn't feel great, uh, I didn't drop a ton, right? Um, and so it could have been a lot worse, I think, if I had really pushed my luck or kind of stayed in matches longer than I should have, even though I wasn't necessarily succeeding with the deck. Uh, this morning I tried out another deck that's really just pool one, pool two cards that, you know, somebody suggested to me on Twitter. And uh, kind of a different story, right? Um Having, uh, like you say, kind of streaks, right? Like uh, having better streaks where I still lost a few games today while I've been playing with this new deck. But I think every loss I've had has been one or two cubes. And more than often than not, I've been winning upwards of four cubes with this deck today. And it, yeah, it just feels better when, uh, you know, I'm not winning every game and I'm not as focused on that. But I, uh, I'm really focused on, you know, just knowing when to stay in uh really trying to play uh smart against my opponents and and kind of make the optimal choices which is not filling the curve which is not you know just staying in to try to force the win etc so it definitely uh, you know it, it definitely can feel bad when you're playing with the deck and you have losses and you go on a streak but like like you say Dan um you really can kind of minimize the negative impact of a losing streak in Marvel Snap compared to other games yeah, and also I I think it's a good uh, it's a really good way of looking at it where you kind of um, don't take it dramatically when you lose and don't make it such a fuss when you win. Like a lot of people in other card games, like for example, I've been coaching Hearthstone for many years now, and a lot of people their humor is entirely based on win and losses. They win, they're happy. They lose, they feel terrible. But the thing is, it's a card game. Random things are going to happen. Things out of our controls are going to happen, which means we're going to lose 100%. There's nothing we could have done in this game. Marvel Snap kind of gives you that chance of you can still have an impact. You can minimize the loss. You can still like have that one element of control that nobody can take away from you. And if you, I think if you think about it this way, it makes it so much better because suddenly like you feel like you've won something from a terrible situation. Yeah, that's a really good way of looking at it. And, you know, I'm all for one of, uh, for not putting too much emotion in a game. I mean, I love playing games. I love winning. We all do. But like you say, um, I think that's one of the inviting things of Marvel Snap is you can kind of, even in, in defeat, you can still be victorious in the long run, right? Um, like I, I think it was, I don't remember the player's name. Uh, I'm sorry, but... Um, he had an interesting way. I'm not entirely, like, I don't agree with everything, but he was saying, like, basically, imagine every game is four cubes, which is, you can bring each game, if you want, to four cubes, which is you snap, and we just ignore your opponent. So, imagine the average is four cubes for each game. So, every time you win, and you didn't get four, it's on you. And every time you lose, and you lost four, it's also on you. And I really like this way because suddenly every time you lose and it's just one, maybe two cubes, it doesn't mean you made anything wrong. You paid to see if it was a two and you just retreated at the right time if it was a one. You played correctly. You lost, but your intentions, your like reflection were correct. So don't blame yourself. Yeah. No, I think I think we're having we're having some positive talk. So I, I hope this is helping some people who maybe who maybe are feeling discouraged or have felt discouraged as they. Uh, jumped over to the Marvel Snap boat. Um, you know, I just had this thought, Dan, as we've been talking. Uh, I'd like to just get your take on this. Um, you know, it's been a while since we've talked about unreleased cards here on the podcast, but for those who don't know, you know, there's been cards data mined in Marvel Snap. Uh, this has happened, you know, for months now. 
Uh, obviously, these cards are subject to change, uh, whether that's their cost, their power, their ability, etc. cetera. Um, but there is one card that was data mined earlier on that is Mephisto. He's kind of the devil yes. character of the Marvel Snap or the Marvel Universe. And currently, as he stands, kind of in the code in the game, again, maybe will change in the future, is a six cost, zero power card with the ability that reads, if you win this game, double your winnings. Uh, we're obviously talking a lot about how Marvel Snap is kind of different. This paradigm has changed from card games when you're playing Marvel Snap. And we've talked a lot about the snapping and the cube mechanics. What are your, what's your take on Mephisto? You think it's a card that will be good? Is it more of a meme card? Do you see this being played a lot? What are, what are your thoughts on Mephisto in its current state? Well, first, there is one thing, like, I'm not sure about the card. I think it works this way, but when it says double your winnings, do you also double your opponent's loss or not? I'm glad you said that because that's exactly where my brain went when I just read it a, a minute ago. I think it only doubles your winnings. I do okay, not. So imagine the game is four cubes. I win eight, you lose four. Correct. Okay, so actually I think this is really good because that could create a ton of frustration for the losing player. Because they're like, okay, we're playing for one cube. I'm just going to go to the end. It's a two. And then suddenly you're like Mephisto and you're like, uh, okay, I should have retreated. And it just creates a weird environment. Uh, as for the court playability, well, there's a guy named Mr. Negative that probably has a, something to say about it. Because obviously like six power, uh, six uh, costs, zero power. You can't expect to win if this is your turn six. Like you either find a way to cheat it out or you find a way to make it good. And suddenly zero cost, six power is a card that you basically want to throw in every single deck in the entire game. Oh yeah. So it's obvious Mr. Negative will be like trying to make Miss Fist work. And I think it's actually like kind of a perfect match because since being nerfed twice. Mr. Negative really became a snap and retreat coin card. If it goes well, you won't even feel the minus one power from the card. You're just gonna, like, it's gonna be a highway to the win. Like, you get Hyrule Man for zero, you get, I don't know, Mystic, Rogue, uh, Wolvesbane, uh, Ironheart, all these cards. You, your turn six is gonna be absolutely insane. You're gonna develop like 70 worth of points and not counting location bonuses and things like this. It's gonna be incredible. But when you don't have Mr. Negative on four, or your hand is just weird because you already have those super key cards already in hand and you can't switch them out, you're just going to retreat. And they feel like Mephisto just fits this bill perfectly. Like, you know you're going to win. Yeah, play me. You have a doubt? Just get away. Lose a cube. Lose a cube. Try again. I'm going to make it back. As soon as we win, you get all those cubes back anyway. Yeah. I think it'll be I such say, a... Outside this specifically... I haven't found it. Maybe there are decks that can cheat it out. I don't know, like maybe Lockjaw, maybe El, uh, Ella. This kind of cards, maybe they can produce enough value that you can have a, a bad card in the mix and you still win enough. But I think the day it gets released, Mr. Negative gains like, I don't know, 25% in popularity. And then we start thinking about the rest. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think that pairing with Mr. Negative is, is a match made in heaven. Um, but obviously, when everybody starts playing Mr. Negative, well, then everybody starts playing counter to Mr. Negative, right? Uh, you know, uh, things like Cosmo, so you can't reveal Mr. Negative, and et cetera, et cetera, right? So, yeah, we're going to talk Cosmo, we're going to talk Sandman, uh, we might talk Enchantress, because a lot of the cards in the deck are uh, ongoing effects. Yeah, obviously, like, if the deck becomes prevalent and people start playing it a lot, obviously, counters are going to write. Yeah. But obviously, it's an, uh, yeah, I, di I didn't see this conversation going to a Mephisto conversation. I'll have to add that into the, the tagline for this episode. But um, I think it's interesting, right? Because it definitely could help you climb faster, theoretically, if there, if there are a couple decks that play well with Mephisto, like you say, that even though he's a bad card by himself, if he can be played in the right kinds of decks and you can kind of double your climb up the ladder, uh, I think it'll be an interesting card to see just when it comes out. Who knows when that'll be? Uh, could be this year, could be next year, who knows, but uh, definitely will be interesting to see how that plays into this, uh, just these key differences and systems that we've talked about today with Marvel Snap. Yeah, and uh, for, for, for those uh, uh, listening to us, I think like if you're not really sure how to approach Marvel Snap, I really think you should look at cards like Mephisto 
or Mr. Negative or these kind of cards, I think they really embody the essence of Marvel Snap. Because, yes, you can play it like any other card game. So you can try to have that 60-70% win rate and just slowly build and just see the cubes rising and it's kind of reassuring. But I think as time is going to pass, we're going to see more of these cards which really put the emphasis on the snap and retreat um, kind of gameplay. And uh, it's it's really good that we have those cards already in the game, like the Mr. Negatives, the LLS, the that kind of card, but it's also really good that there are aren't like it doesn't look at least that they're gonna shy away from this direction, because this was one thing I was afraid of, which is like how much are people coming from other card games going to influence how Marvel Snap is played? Like imagine people are like I don't like the stakes, I don't like being able to snap, I just wanna make sure like I just wanna have a steady win rate and and climb. And this could have affected the direction they take with the game. Like seeing cards like Mephisto with, I don't know, Galactus, Thanos, this kind of like super huge card that have super funny effects, but can also just lose you the game because you invested into it and they gave you nothing in return. I think this is what makes Marvel Snap unique in a way. Yeah. Yeah, such a such a crazy, wonderful game, really. I mean, they've, they've definitely created something special and I think we're, we're seeing that... Uh, uh, you know, with the game being successful on the App Store, with um, with people talking about it so much on social media, etc., um, they just created such a, a unique unique thing, and they've really, um, again, I'm not saying this in a negative way. I think there are a lot of great games out there that have similar systems and have kind of cr- uh, followed a certain trajectory that's very similar, right? That they've all kind of stayed inside the mold, and then you have Marvel Snap here that's just willing to break the mold, right? And really change up the game and yes that's hard to adjust to that's the whole reason we're having this conversation today um but i think it's good and i think hopefully it inspires uh you know other card game developers i mean we all have card game card games and so hopefully people feel more empowered going forward to just kind of break down the walls and create whatever crazy awesome card game they want to yeah definitely and uh i like I, I think we get asked a lot about like do we think Marvel Snap is going to continue its uh, its current trend uh, in the future? I think probably like some people are gonna quit on the game because they don't like this kind of this kind of like approach. But I also think that everyone that's like kind of been hooked to it by this kind of gambling aspect is going to stay on the game for a very long time as long as they provide like friendless tournaments and like everything you could expect. So in a way that it feels good to 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 think that Marvel Snap is going to create kind of its own community and not really like just be in the card games community where you're just compared to the other card games all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of created its own uh subgenre of the card game uh genre. So well, Dan, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I, I love this conversation. I, again, listeners, I really hope this is helpful for some of you. And whether you're, you know, you've know, you been playing through the beta or you're just jumping into the game over the last couple of weeks. Uh, as always, please let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear, uh, was this helpful for you? Did you have other things you wish we would have talked about with this conversation? Let us know on Twitter at can't underscore stop underscore snap. Um, before we go, a couple of things, Dan. One, I know you have an article coming out on MarvelSnapZone.com soon about this. So I'd love for you just to talk about that as well as uh, let the listeners know again how they can best find you on social media. All right. So there's, yeah, there's one article that is currently in the database. It's either being edited or uh, ready to be published as we speak. It's called Climbing the Marvel Snap Ladder, the basics you need to know. So it kind of covers everything that is important to the mindset of uh, climbing on Marvel Snap. And otherwise, there's already one that's been published a while ago uh, that is a very clickbaity title. And I'm sorry about it, but it's the Ultimate Sniping Strategy Guide for Marvel Snap. And it's kind of the same. It kind of covers the different situations and the different point of views uh, when it comes to snapping. So if you guys are having any troubles with these, uh, I would highly recommend uh, reading uh, one of these articles or both. And if you have questions, uh, feel free to come and ask, uh, either on uh, Marvel Snap Zone Community Discord 
um, you can just tag me on pretty much any channel there and I should see it fairly quickly. You can find me on uh, on Twitter, which is den underscore CCG. Um, and these are pretty much the two places you can find me. I would say like if we face on Marble Snap, feel free to add me, but that's not available for now. We will get there. We will get there and that will open up. Uh... Hopefully, this is, this is yeah. a message, devs. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm very interested to know in the next patches and what what it will contain. So, uh, stay tuned for that, listeners. We will definitely be covering it here, both on the podcast and on MarvelSnapZone.com. Uh, Den, thank you for being on here two weeks in a row. Really appreciate it, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you, like thanks for having me. Always uh, happy to have these discussions about the game, and uh, have a nice day as well. Thank you. Listeners, as always, we appreciate you being here, and we will catch you in the next episode. Can't Stop Snapping is a podcast written, recorded, produced, and hosted by Michael Thurman. Thanks for listening. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.